Good morning and welcome to our online worship this morning, uh, February 7th. It is good to gather with you um, on this very frigid cold day. Um, we stay warm at home and we're grateful to gather together um, in our homes and have these resources available to use. Um, the bulletin will be posted on our um, website which is www.ctvelca.org. And while you're over there, you can just click on the video. If you're starting from YouTube, the YouTube link will be right there above the bulletin as well. And so you can just click on that um, to follow along. If you want, we're gonna do a little bit more complete of a service since we had a little bit more of um, advance notice, not quite enough for us to record altogether in the sanctuary, um, but enough for us to put together a little bit more um, in terms of splicing the music and whatnot. So we will have our hymns. We won't have communion. That's still in the bulletin because I made this before we decided it was going to be too cold to be outside in the parking lot. Um, but we begin and I invite you wherever you are to just take a moment with me of silence. Um, sometimes we come to worship with all sorts of everything and hecticness, even if we're staying at home in our jammies, um, there we come with whatever. And we can bring all of that with us, but it is good to just take a moment to kind of like set it down um, and trust that God can handle it while we are in worship. And maybe we won't have to take it out with us when we leave um, or go into the other room, as it were. Um, so let's take that moment together. And we begin uh, with our greeting, which is in the bulletin on the first inside cover. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And we pray our prayer of the day. And if you have the bulletin in front of you, I invite you uh, to pray that with me uh, out loud. Or just read along if that's more comfortable. I know sometimes it's awkward if you're with other people or home alone. But let us pray. Healing Lord, by your goodness you healed many who were ill, even raising the dead to life. Restore us to new life, healing our hearts, minds, and spirits, so that we may proclaim praise and gratitude for your compassion to all who will hear. In the name of the one who is himself new life, Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. And we continue with the psalm, uh, which is comes from Psalm 119, which is a really long psalm. So you see, we're going to read verses 105 through 107, and you can read the bolded parts if you like along with me. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I have sworn an oath and confirmed it to observe your righteous ordinances. I am severely afflicted. Give me life, O Lord, according to your word. And the gospel is the gospel according to Luke, chapter 7. Glory to you, O Lord. After Jesus had finished all his sayings in the hearing of the people, he entered Capernaum. A centurion there had a slave whom he valued highly and who was ill and close to death. When he heard about Jesus, he sent some Jewish elders to him, asking him to come and heal his slave. When they came to Jesus, they appealed to him earnestly, saying, He is worthy of having you do this for him, for he loves our people, and it is he who built our synagogue for us. And Jesus went with them. But when he was not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to say to him, Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am not worthy to have you come under my roof. Therefore, I did not presume to come to you, but only speak the word and let my servant be healed. For I also am a man set under authority with soldiers under me, and I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my slave, do this, and the slave does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed at him, and turning to the crowd that followed him, he said, I tell you, not even in Israel have I found such faith. When those who had been sent returned to the house, they found the slave in good health. 
Soon afterwards, he went to a town called Nain, and his disciples and a large crowd went with him. As he approached the gate of the town, a man who had died was being carried out. He was his mother's only son, and she was a widow, and with her was a large crowd from the town. When the Lord saw her, he had compassion for her and said to her, Do not weep. Then he came forward and touched the bier, and the bearers stood still. And he said, Young man, I say to you, rise. The dead man sat up and began to speak, and Jesus gave him to his mother. Fear seized all of them, and they glorified God, saying, A great prophet has risen among us, and God has looked favorably on his people. This word about him spread throughout Judea and all the surrounding country. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And we'll see if I blew up the font on my tablet big enough to read my sermon without my reading glasses. We'll see. I changed my prescription and now I need my readers a lot more. This Sunday, today, obviously, is the Super Bowl. And... I was hearing stories about the fans that they were going to allow to be there and um, I went and I looked and it said that the NFL is going to allow 22,000 people um, to attend this year's Super Bowl, which is a lot of people, but only about one third of the normal number of people that the stadium can hold. And I thought, boy, that's a lot of empty seats. And of course, we all know the reason for this is COVID precautions and trying to space people out and be as careful as possible while still having some sense of that uh, celebration and festivity and excitement. But thinking about all of those empty seats in the stadium got me to thinking about all of the other empty chairs in our lives as individuals and as a nation, as a world. Just last night, I was looking at the statistics and over 465,000 people have died from COVID in the United States and about 2.3 million people have died worldwide. And every Saturday morning, I listen, usually while I'm puttering around the house and cleaning up the dishes and drinking my coffee and doing whatever random Saturday morning chores I feel like I need to get done. I usually have NPR on the radio. And they've had this ongoing series of reflections about individuals who have died. They've had um, interviews with family members of people who have died. They've had conversations where two people talk about their loved one. Um, and it's, I don't know if they do it every week, but they do it a lot. And they have had people from all walks of life, like the people who have died have, were people from all walks of life that might not have had anything in common um, while they were living, um, different backgrounds, different incomes, different races, different religions, and yet their families and their loved ones now all linked together through this horrible common experience of losing someone to this terrible disease. That commonality, of course, is because this virus and death in general does not particularly care where you come from or what race or religion you are or how much money you make, although it is certainly true that people of color and people living in poverty um, in this nation have definitely suffered more greatly than um, other people of, of more means, perhaps. Um, they more have been more likely to die from this disease. But whatever they had in common or did not have in common, what all of these people left behind have encountered is this empty chair, the one at the holiday gathering or the Zoom birthday party or the drive-by parade of birthday or anniversary wishes. Um, We've all experienced that. Even if we haven't lost someone we know to COVID, um, we have lost people to other accidents or other illnesses. And all of us have experienced that grief and loneliness and loss, no matter who we are, of losing someone we love and having that empty chair across the table. And we don't usually have much of a say. I mean, practically never have much of have any control over 
why and how that happened, how we lost someone. And we hear in this story from Luke's gospel, these two stories, actually, this one passage, um, stories that remind us that struggle and sickness and death are part of everyone's life experience. First, on the scene, we meet the centurion, although we never actually meet the centurion. We just meet his little emissaries that he sends out. Uh, but on the surface of things, he would seem to have a pretty good life. He is a Roman soldier. He has power and privilege. He has authority over other people. He has community respect, right, from the Jewish leaders and, and others. He has enough wealth to own slaves to have built the synagogue for the Jewish community in which he lives. But for all of these advantages in his life, for all of his experience as someone who normally could say, go, come, do this, and they would go, come, and do these things that he commanded them to do, when he sends for Jesus, it is because this slave that he values highly, and I know slave is, makes us feel icky. It's not a word we're real comfortable with because of all of the history in our country. Um, but it was part of life in ancient times in a different way than it was in our country. Uh, but the slave that he valued highly was ill and close to death, Luke tells us. And the centurion comes face to face with a situation that he cannot command, um, with a situation he can't control or change. And then we meet a widowed woman in the town of Nain. Now Jesus is, is coming from town to town, from Capernaum to Nain, 25-ish miles, I think is what I read. Um, and he is approaching the gate of the town with this whole crowd of people with a bunch of disciples and others. And they see a funeral procession, procession coming out towards the gate for a man who had died and he was his mother's only son. She would seemingly have little in common with the Roman centurion. She is Jewish. He was Gentile. She's a woman. He is a man, obviously. She has lost her husband. She's a widow. And now she faces this fresh grief of the death of her only son. And so now she is facing a world without protection and without perhaps um, provision. Um, women were kind of pretty much dependent on the men in their family, although the community certainly would support her. But that is always a command in scripture, right? To remember and take care of the widow and the orphan. Um, and so she has probably financial insecurity, even with that community support, um, along with the emotional grief of losing her son. And there are all of these feelings and, and future worries kind of swirling about, and there's nothing that the widow can do either to change any of it. She can't go back and make her son alive again. And so the centurion and the woman who may not have much in common both are met by Jesus in this moment of loss or danger of loss, and both are facing the prospect of that empty chair in their homes moving forward into the future, and both are powerless to control or change the outcome. And then along comes Jesus. He is, Luke tells us, we kind of skipped over from the end of chapter six, where we ended last week, there's more of chapter six. It's the Sermon on the Plain, which is similar to Matthew's Sermon on the Mount, a little bit different uh, take on some things. Uh, but he is fresh off of that Sermon on the Plain, and he comes into Capernaum. He had done a whole lot of teaching and a whole lot of healing on that plain, and he comes to Capernaum. And as he comes into the town, he is greeted by Jewish leaders who are sent by the centurion to ask for Jesus' help to heal his servant, his slave. And Jesus goes with them. He doesn't have to, but he does. And as they get a little bit closer to the house, the centurion sends out more people, another delegation, to say to Jesus that he don't, you don't have to come into my house. That would have been perhaps a, a religious as well as a cultural boundary for this Jewish teacher to go into a Gentile Roman occupying force soldier uh, to his home. But the centurion says, just speak the word and my servant will be healed. And Jesus is amazed at this faith that he sees that from the man, from the centurion, the Roman soldier. 
And so he doesn't continue on his way, but when the people get back to the house, they find the slave is well and in good health. So Jesus, who knew all along he could heal him, does heal him from a distance. And then the story moves us along to the town of Nain, where Jesus encounters this widow woman. And the, the reading says that Jesus saw her and had compassion for her. And he says, do not weep. Which is not exactly like the most compassionate thing you can imagine someone saying if you ever had like a helping professions kind of a class. Um, pastoral Care 101 would say, don't say something like that to somebody who's just lost their only son. But Jesus, Jesus knows what's coming next. And Jesus reaches out and touches the beer. That's the, the thing that they carry the body or the coffin on. And he says to the man, rise up and speak. And he does. Well, he doesn't tell him to speak. He says, young man, rise up. And he does. And he sits up and he starts to speak. And Jesus gives him back to his mother. And there's this reunion that was never supposed to happen, right? How does, how does something like that happen? And the people are both afraid and filled with this awe and glorifying God for this prophet. They recognize a prophet who has risen in their land that God has blessed them through him. This is what Jesus does. He comes into these situations of loss and of grief, and Jesus speaks life. He comes despite those cultural and religious boundaries. You know, you didn't touch a dead body. You didn't touch the platform. You, you know, like that was a, that made you unclean. You didn't go to a Gentile's house and into their home. There is ritual in, you know, uncleanness in that. And yet he comes to the aid of these two people who are desperate and in need. One who doesn't even have a chance to ask. He just acts on his own and he speaks to them healing and he offers them hope by his presence with the widow. And even by just speaking the word when he is not physically there for the centurion's servant. And so Jesus transforms their grief and their sorrow and their loss into amazement and joy. It is true for us, too, that loss is certain in our lives. None of us gets out of here without experiencing some hardship in life, sickness and trouble and anxiety and doubt and death comes to everyone. But that is not the final word. Jesus doesn't come and remove all of the empty chairs from our tables. We know that. He doesn't make it so there's never an empty chair to begin with. But Jesus does come and enter into our grief and into our sorrow. He comes and walks along with us in our funeral processions, whatever that we may be grieving and mourning. He comes alongside us in our fears. I don't think he usually does say don't weep to most of us in most of our situations, but instead with that compassion that he has, that is such a deep part of who he is, he weeps along with us. Jesus comes and shows up in the friends who mourn with us, the ones who pray for us and present our requests to Jesus on our behalf. He comes in the, in the form of those who carry us along and support us in so many ways. Jesus comes in that peace that passes all understanding and in the spirit who prays for us with sighs too deep for words. Jesus walks with us through our worries and comforts us in our challenges. His presence with us helps us to live through the grief of all of our empty chairs because in Jesus we see the empty tomb that lies beyond the empty chair. And we remember that Jesus has conquered death. And so we rejoice in the promise of the res resurrection, even with tears on our face, even in the midst of our grief. We rejoice in that promise and that hope. And for that promise of the resurrection, we say thanks be to God. Amen. And now Charmaine very kindly recorded our first hymn. Um, which is Healer of Our Every Ill. And so I invite you to sing along or listen along and read the words. And uh, we'll be back together for the Apostles' Creed.
Now, together with the whole church, I invite you to pre profess your faith uh, using the words of the Apostles' Creed, which is on the inside of your bulletin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we continue with the prayers of intercession. And the each petition will end with healing God. And the response is hear our prayer. We pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. A Roman officer recognized the power of words to create and bring about results. May we take responsibility for the words we utter and the worlds we create with them, choosing to speak love, mercy, and redemption for all. Healing God, hear our prayer. We live in a competitive and often ruthless world where a few prosper wildly and too many go without basic needs. Help us to even the balance and work for fair compensation of workers and distribution of resources so that all may thrive. Healing God, hear our prayer. Our headstrong ways have brought destruction and disaster upon this planet we call home. Show us how our equally strong powers of innovation and creation can begin to turn around the damage we have done and bring about restoration in the natural world. Healing God, hear our prayer. You only need to say the word and we are healed. Cure our ills, whatever their cause, and strengthen us to continue serving you. Bless all of those whose names we bring before you today, especially Paulette, Foy, Carolyn, Sue, Vicki, Ethel, Marge, Richard, Nancy, Irv, Gloria, Lois, Sally, Grace, and all those we name before you now. Healing God, hear our prayer. Be with all who grieve the loss of loved ones and hold them all in your comforting arms until the day when we will all be reunited in your eternal glory. Healing God, hear our prayer. Receive our prayers and shed light on our path as we seek to walk in your ways and bring glory to you through your Son, Jesus, our Lord. Amen. And as I said at the beginning, I believe we're going to not do communion at home um, and look forward to having communion in the parking lot when we can do that again next week, we hope. Let's pray for good weather. Um, and so we will move on to the Lord's Prayer, and I invite you to pray that with me. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The announcements are printed in your bulletin. Um, and so you can check that out at our website. Again, if you have been following along um, without the bulletin, that's fine. But if you want to see the announcements, you can go to our website, which is www.ctvelca.org. CTV as in Christ the Victor, ELCA as in our denomination. Um, 
So I send you wherever you're going from the couch to the kitchen or wherever um, with this blessing. The God of glory dwell in you richly, name you beloved, and shine brightly on your path. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. And we sing our sending song, My Life Flows On in Endless Song, and we give thanks to Charmaine who recorded these at her house uh, for us and for the gifts of music that she shares with us every week. And so please sing that with us. Well, wherever you are going on this day, I pray you go with peace and with joy and with a sense of Christ's presence with you. And I dismiss you with these words, go in peace. Christ is your light. Thanks be to God. Amen. And we will see you hopefully next week. Um, have a great day. <laughs>